This month, I'm gonna be going from studio to stage for the very first time. I've got live shows coming up in my hometown of Manchester, as well as London. And if you follow this channel or have listened to my music, you might be thinking, what are you talking about, Matt? Surely you've performed before. And yes, of course I have, but not my own personal music. This will be the first time. I've played a lot with other artists and bands, supporting them and hoping ideally to make them sound good, but this will be the first time where I take my music, which are predominantly beats, and play them live with a full band. I started releasing my own music during the COVID-19 pandemic, as it was a bit of a time and space that enabled me to reflect on what really matters to me. And I used that time, I guess somewhat productively, although there were loads of challenges, to write my own music. And I kind of found a routine writing something fresh every single day as a bit of like a personal challenge, but also as a release. I then ended up sharing clips on social media, and then with the help of some friends that I actually met online, ended up releasing those tracks as records, first as singles, then an EP, then an album which came out last year. So I've really been in the world of writing and releasing and collaborating with other artists. And I've kind of put performance and live shows on the back burner for a little bit, maybe as a bit of an excuse. But actually, now I feel ready and confident to be able to put something on in real life, live, and connect with you all in person. So in this video, I hope to share a bit of an insight into my preparation for the shows by sharing a bit of behind the scenes stuff like practice, rehearsals, as well as promotion, and probably loads of other things that go behind it as well. What's up everyone? So just on the way to rehearsal, it's gonna be really fun to hear how the tracks end up sounding in a live situation. Very glamorous Manchester. Welcome. I, oh, I like 12. 12. 12 has some sick bits in it. I love it because he gets the whole Julia Roberts thing like sets me a little bit. 12 is hilarious. I like 12. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds a bit lame. But you, yeah, you, should, you, you, know, <laughs> you just got to do something that it has to feel like, it, you know, you, I really want to do it. You know, um, New Jazz Underground. So they've done like a MF Doom suite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the tune bombs I've seen in. this. What's up everyone? Just got done with rehearsal and we managed to play through six songs and it's really cool hearing how they sound going from like beats in the studio to playing live with other musicians. We had Aaron Wood on trumpet, Stephen Hermit on drums and Chris Rabbits on bass. Big thanks to you guys uh, for making it sound so good. It was really fun to kind of open up the songs, work on different tempos, slightly different time feels, work on little moments as well that are different to how they sound on the records. And I can't wait to share it with you all. So I'm going to work on figuring and I'm just going to try and work out a few bits on the keys. minor, B flat minor, C sharp minor. So let's try and apply that to figuring because maybe there's some moments where we can use those patterns and move things around. <laughs> 
Cool. Now, I was just trying to basically create a motif and then hold on to it, develop it, come back to it. I feel like that's a bit of a weak point in my playing. And when I listen back to myself on recordings, that's something that always stands out to me. So I'm going to try and make that a deliberate part of my practice. Oh, note to self, practicing slow is good because it just shows that I've been rushing. So I've got about 10 minutes left of practice. I've focused quite intently on some of those arpeggio shapes as well as building the motif over on figuring just before. Now I'm gonna let all of it go and just play. I think this is a really important part of practice, kind of giving the analytical side of the brain a bit of a rest and just igniting the creative side. So kind of forget the exercises and just step forward and just play. What's up, it's Matt Wilde, we're at Band on the Wall. This is my tunes on the terrace, here's Pivot. So we're at Band on the Wall, which is in Manchester. I actually released my debut album on Band on the Wall Recordings, which is their in-house label. Anyway, they've got a series called Tunes on the Terrace. It's recently been renovated and they've got a lovely terrace up at the top and they film local musicians playing their tunes and put it on their social media. So we've just got done filming a Tunes on the Terrace, which was loads of fun. They were lovely and accommodating and I think it sounded good, so we'll wait and see. But yeah, my gig in Manchester is at Band on the Wall on the 14th of March as well, so it's really nice to be here. Also, I used to come here when I was a teenager and it's kind of where I learned to play music. There was a charity called Brighter Sound who were based here and they used to run projects for like young people so yeah it's kind of like a full circle moment anyway really pleased with how today went feeling really prepared for the gigs having loads of fun which is always a good sign and yeah see you soon so yesterday's rehearsals have made me think of a few things to work on today so i'm gonna get to it That's a pretty cool idea. So working on taking this quarter note triplet idea and applying it in four note grouping so it displaces the rhythm. So we have something like over F minor, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. Let's try that. Two, 
It's really nice working with the metronome nice and slowly here at 60 beats per minute. It makes it so easy to hear if you're rushing or dragging. Also, just a note on these practice sessions, I'm working on the things that I find difficult because I find that that tends to be the most efficient type of practice. It's cool to work on the things that you're already good at, but when you work on the things that you kind of suck at, it really helps to, I guess, get better. Which sounds self-explanatory actually, but maybe in practice it's harder said than done. So it's about half past 10 a.m. and I've got to leave at 11. So I'm just gonna spend the next 10, 15 minutes before I get ready, just playing through this tune entitled Smile. So yeah. <laughs> so it's been a busy month. I've been practicing a lot more than usual, working on all sorts of exercises and going deep into the songs that I've written. It's been super interesting going back to the old songs, hearing how I was thinking about music back then compared to how I'm thinking about it now. It's kind of like a weird inception sort of thing, but it taught me a lot about myself, which is quite beautiful actually. And performing live has given us an opportunity to reimagine some of those songs. I've been noticing that through this process, I've really enjoyed practicing. It's actually my bread and butter, so to speak and it's really what gives me life. And actually, I got into writing music because I fell in love with practicing. So to be able to reconnect with that in a way that's more purposeful and goal-oriented, in that we have a, a series of shows coming up, has been an incredibly transformative and heartwarming experience, actually. If there were no barriers, I'd probably end up practicing at this sort of level for the rest of my life. But actually, because I've chosen to try and pursue music as a career, I'm really committed to the different facets of that, ranging from like marketing and promotion and writing songs and admin, working with record labels, collaborating with other artists and musicians, working on my YouTube videos, which I've fallen in love with. It means that practice time is precious. So to have something to work towards that requires practice at the core component of it is a blessing. Anyway, all of that to say, big thank you for watching this video. If you're in Manchester or London, do consider joining us for the live shows. It's going to be an awesome experience. Can't wait to meet some of you in person as well. If you do come, let me know down below in the comments or write to me privately. It'd be awesome to hear from you. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who's been supporting these videos. We're about three months in and we've just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is insane. So big thank you to everyone who's subscribed and has been enjoying and supporting these videos. It really means a lot and look forward to seeing you in the next video.